Faith can move mountain. Radio Maria 91.3 FM. The voice of truth. Yeah. Hello, go listeners of Radio Maria 91.3 FM. You're welcome to the program. Learn with us. It is an educational program where we discuss the importance of education. We also treat various subjects and topics here, as well as dissect topical issues bordering around education. And you also get to hear an expert opinion on the way forward. So, ever heard the word corporation fee? Hmm. What comes to your mind when you hear that? Is it proper to pay a fee, a corporation fee, to a body or an institute that is not legalized? This and more you're going to be hearing today. Guess no further. Our topic today is the bane of examination malpractice in Nigeria. What do we mean by bane? Affliction, burden, calamity, and all sorts that comes with examination malpractice. So to start this segment, we have on our spotlight today, Professor Aisha Mekudi. She's the first female professor from Northwest Nigeria. Born on January 31st, 1983. Currently, she's the youngest professor of law in Nigeria. On the 5th of May, 2023, she was appointed Deputy Vice Chancellor Academics in the University of Abuja by the governing board of the school after a due process approved by the Senate. She joined the services of the University of Abuja in 2008 as lecturer too, before rising to the rank of professor in 2022. In 2004, she obtained a bachelor's degree in law from the University of Reading, England. In 2005, she obtained a master's degree in law from the London School of Economics and Political Science. Afterwards, she bagged a doctorate degree in 2015 in international law from the University of Africa. Congratulations, ma'am. Note, only a few names will be remembered, not because they are easy to pronounce, but because they've impacted positively on the society. So, what would you and I be remembered for? I ask again, what would you and I be remembered for? In the studio, I have with me so many lovely people. Listen as you hear them introduce themselves. All right, my name is um, Uncle Ben. I'm the co uncle of this program. My name is Christian Olorutoba. I am Choma Okereke. I am Itwechiri Chelsea. And I'm Eswana Jane Abodoya. Don't go anywhere. We'll be back to you shortly after the break. Dear listener, you're welcome back. Um, in this segment, we have um, two students with us who are going to talk about um, exam math practice. The topic for debate is, um, is exam math practice justifiable? So I'm going to give it up to Chelsea, who is going to be opposing that. And then Christian, the studio here with us, is going to counter her opinion. So Chelsea, over to you. In our world of today, buildings have collapsed, people have drowned, aircraft have crashed, infant and maternal mortality on the rise, 
inflation recurring the order of the day, all because of lack of professionalism on the part of the architects, doctors, and so on, all because of this one monster examination of practice. Good day, dear listeners. My name is Etuetri Chelsea, and I am here to strongly lay my opinion of opposition to the topic which says is exam or practice justifiable with these points. Firstly, examination and practice can be seen as all forms of illegal activity before, during, and even after examination. It is a sin and it is a crime because it is a sin against God and it is a crime punishable by the law. When a person, especially in an office setting, is found cheating their way into positions of importance, they can be arrested and obviously dismissed from service. Also, in a school, when a child is caught cheating, they will be expelled and they will not only bring shame to their school, but they will also bring shame to themselves and to their parents. So now, let me ask, what have you gained? Again, it encourages laziness in our society. The students who believe that cheating is the only way to pass tests, exams, and even homework will feel like they do not even have to study anymore. They will become lazy and this will encourage truancy in society because they know that whenever they have a test or an examination, they can always cheat their way to succeed. Also, corruption becomes outrageous when examination or practice is the order of the day. When people that do not honestly deserve the position they are in have cheated their way into getting into better positions of authority, this tends to reduce the economical development of the society and also encourage various crimes in society. Furthermore, the rising cases of insurgencies have become quite alarming as lack of professionalism is on the rise. Now, let me use some important aspects of life as case study. Let's say a family member of yours is about to have a life-saving operation and the person who is to perform this surgery is one who has cheated their way through our medical school. Or you have just you've been living in a house that just collapsed all because of poor foundation and your house just got burnt because of poor electrical wiring. And when you trace this, you realize that the architect or the electrician or the engineer that was responsible for this was one who had no idea of what was going on in school, but just cheated their way into getting the job that they have. People use the excuse of pressure as the reason why they indulge in examination malpractice. But I tell you, if you do not listen to the voices that are telling you that you cannot do it, and you believe in yourself, and you work towards achieving success, cheating will never be an option for you. Also, the Bible says faith without work is useless. So when you believe in yourself and put a lot of effort, you can do whatever you want to do in life, and you don't always have to cheat to get answers and to succeed in life. I hope at this point I've been able to convince you that exam or practice is not justifiable. Thank you. Wow. Those are powerful points um, by Chelsea there. And um, she's telling us that exam or practice is not justifiable. Let's hear from Christian. What's your opinion on this? Examination and practice is very dire and a very gruesome case in our schools today, most especially in the secondary level. Even though I strongly discourage this practice, I want you all to put your legs in the shoes of students who lack quality education. Those unfortunate students whose educational lives are both sad and unpromised. Those students whose futures are undetermined just because of an ineffective system and other socioeconomic factors. That's why I agree that examination my practice is justifiable. Standing on the existing protocol, my name is Christian Alontoba, and I'm speaking to you today to prove with my points that examination my practice is justifiable. Let's begin. Let me start convincing you. Imagine I, a student seeking knowledge, willing to learn, search for a better future through education. But because of bad teaching practices, poor learning environments, pressure from both peers at home, discrimination and criticism. It is nearly impossible for me to learn. Let me expatiate. Bad teaching practices. Some teachers today have grown lazy. They don't care about their students' progression. In fact, they only focus on the opposite. Tell me, how can some teachers teach a class without asking questions? How can some teachers teach a class without answering questions? How can some teachers teach a class without giving tests and assignments and corrections? Even worse, how can some teachers teach a class without even showing up for weeks? How do you expect me to learn? And then after everything, that same teacher will boldly set an exam and expect me to pass without cheating. How is it possible? My opponent will probably say that students are lazy. Why can't they read for themselves? 
Okay, then why did I pay fees? I came to school to receive something called knowledge and I'm not getting it. Education is a two-way process. If one way is ruptured, then it's useless. How do you expect me to pass that subject and get good grades without cheating the system? It's impossible. Poor learning environment. Imagine a class of 80 students, not 30, not 50, 80 students. A saying that normal teacher will only teach those who understand and leave the others behind. A saying teacher won't care about people or don't care about those who are slow in learning because they think they are a waste of knowledge. A saying teacher will see me and as non-existent just because of my poor understanding skills. That's not all. Let's move to the students. Imagine if you, in a class, with, with, in a class which is extremely competitive, someone who is always shouting that they understand, or someone who is always, always pressuring you to learn, or is always pressuring you that you are stupid and stuff. What do you expect that students to do? That students will go to go to the extreme lengths to pass. And what, what, what do they do to pass? They cheat. It's not possible. Let's go further. We all, we all know that things, how things are in the world. We all know how things are in Nigeria. Nobody wants to hire a fool. Nobody wants to employ a low-graded personnel. No one. It's nearly impossible to get a blue-collar job in third class. A normal person wants to take care of his or her family, but because of her low GPA and low grades in Waiyak or Neko or Jam, she won't be able to progress. I'm not, it's not, it's not, if I knew about this when I was still in school, then why would I want to fail? If I knew that my grades will affect the way I take care of my family, why would I want to fail? So I have no choice but to cheat if I knew that, if I knew that my, my, my brain capacity can't take it. I'm not trying to say examination my practice is not wrong. I'm just trying to say it's justifiable to some people who are unfortunate. Those people who are so unfortunate that they have to cheat the system to success, to succeed. Thank you. Wow. Hmm. I think Christian was so um, emotional about his point. Uh, but I am not going to be taken down by emotions. But I won't say much because we have um, an expert here with us in the studio who is going to dissect this particular topic with us. Well, just before you draw a conclusion, dear listener, I want to let you know that in the recently concluded UTMA, which is the Unified Tertiary Matriculation Examination, organized by JAM, the Joint Admission Matriculation Board. Four people from Ondo State Akure have been arrested over the issues of impersonation and examination malpractice. Even after they pleaded non, not guilty, They've been remanded and the correctional or in prison, as you will say, until further investigation is carried out. So, there is no way anything that is wrong can be justifiable to be right. Because if you're saying or trying to go, draw your conclusion on this, you may as well push further to say, let us legalize stealing or robbery. What you just heard them say is their opinion, which is the opinion of some persons also. Thank you. We'll be back to you after the break. All right. Um, our listener, you are welcome back to the next segment of our program. Um, with us here uh, is Mrs. Chioma. That will be doing justice to uh, some serious questions we have here. Ma, yes. I want to find out from you. You've listened to the children uh, yes. debates, and then um, Chelsea made her point, and Christian was trying to convince us to believe that the exam and practice is justifiable, even though it was a matter of an opinion. What then is exam and practice? Exam practice is um, an action that is unethical 
and not in consonance with the rules and regulations of an examination body. When a child fakes proficiency in examination to pass, that is what examination malpractice is about. And in recent times, examination malpractice have taken different forms and dimensions and has, has a damaging effect on an individual, the school, uh, the school sector, and the nation at large. So, um, malpractice takes, um, when a child gets involved in examination malpractice, it should have the following things in uh, considerations in mind, that it will damage his reputation. A good reputation is more valuable than money. A child who has a good reputation will project the the image you project to the world matters more than anything. And this could come in hand in dead situations where where its testament is required for an elevation. Engaging in an examination malpractice is putting you putting your reputation at risk. And when caught, you will also be seen as a lazy and corrupt individual who succumbed to tricks to have a means to an end. Also, examination malpractice cripples your critical thinking and creative abilities. Research has proven that reading develops the brain capacity. If you are, if you if you are involved, if you always read extensively and intensively, you will observe that your critical thinking and creative abilities will be developed. So, um, I don't know, um, that's a wonderful point, but why do students malpractice? Okay, there are so many reasons why students cheat in examination. The reason is to maybe to be the first position and to get a better grade in class. They want to be the best and sometimes the parents, they put their children on pressure, as in they give their children so much pressure that if you don't come, if you don't come take first position this time, I will do this or I will do that. So you see the children, they are always under pressure. So when they come to the class, or if the teacher gives them test or gives them an examination, they want to do everything to cheat. Okay. So I want to find out from you um, again. Um, does class size actually affect um, lead to exam my practice and maybe you have um, okay like private school you have like 20 25 students in the class but in a public secondary school especially and even a tertiary institution you see that you have um, up to, you know up to 1,000 person in lecture theater up to 80 students in a class I think that was the point that Christian told me that okay um, with that, some students are actually lost in between. Yes. So, uh, are you also saying that class size can contribute to examination malpractice? Exactly. The number of students in class can lead to examination malpractice because it's always good when a teacher teaches in the class, you get across to all the students and make sure they are participating. But in a situation where, where a teacher has 40 minutes to reach out to the students in a topic and you have a very large class number let's say you have up to 80 students paying attention to what you're saying you would be able, i don't think it, a teacher will be able to reach out to those students in 40 minutes so during the exam the students will want to get involved in my practice to be able to pass and some of them, they, they will be considering the expenses their parents have made on them and how they, if they fail, 
the other classmates will be ahead of them. Some of them wouldn't want things like that to happen, so it makes them get involved in malpractice. Okay, thank you very much. I, I want to know the um do you think parents play a role in exam malpractice? Okay. The parents they have a, they they are they are they are involved in examination malpractice in different ways, directly and indirectly. Like a child, forming a child, you have to start early enough when the child is supposed to learn how to recite the alphabets. You should be able to know that. To recite, to say, to read numbers, you should be able to read numbers. And when the child is supposed to learn how to write, it should be inculcated in him. But when the basis is lost, for example, a child doesn't have confidence. He's in a class, a, a child who is in primary five has seen that the, the classmates are far ahead of him. So it will make him, he no longer have confidence. So parents have a lot of role to play on their children. When, whenever a child is supposed to learn anything, let us, let we as parents make sure they learn such things. And also during a external, um, during exams like JAM and WAEC, some parents aid their, their, their children in getting involved in malpractice because they want them to come out with good grades to be able to gain admission into higher institution. All right, thank you very much. Before I hand over to Jane to ask you um, further questions, I, I want to, some time ago, a friend of mine called me, you know, from the village, and he was like, Ben, could you please come over and assist, write my mathematics work examination for me? Hmm. Is that bad? And I have to... I have to tell him that I, I don't indulge in such a thing. Mm. There are so many people, there are so many miracle centers, mm. they are tagged by so many names. Mm. I, you know, you know uh, recently I, a friend of mine told me about um, some group of students. Okay, um, they were in a private secondary school that don't encourage them more practice. Mm. So when the student um, gets to SS3, they decided that since the school do not indulge in such an art, mm. they need to look for a miracle center. That's what they call it. Mm. And of course, when you get to a miracle center, there's what they call cooperation fee. You mentioned yeah. that at the beginning of this discussion. Uh, a cooperation fee, uh, let me a bit elaborate on that. Okay, you pay your fee, your school fee, the exam fee. Then the school charges extra amount so that they sought, sought the supervisor, sought sometime school management, sought a police, sought everybody involved in the process. So you can see that exam practice is actually systematic, mm. right? And it is a monster we will need to put our hands together to destroy or kill. If we don't kill that monster now, it's going to kill us. It's going to destroy the future of our children. It's going to kill creativity. It's going to kill productivity. Over to you, Jane. All right. Dear good listeners, you're still listening to the program, Learn With Us, and you're still on the dial of Radio Maria 91.3 FM, Abuja. We want to let you know that this is a calling program. Any moment from now, the lines will be open. You're free to call. The number 081-084-47518. 081-084-47518. The topic we're discussing is the bane of examination practice in Nigeria. Call in. Share your opinion with us. What do you think about this? How has it affected the society? Have you ever experienced, from, from the debates that the children put up, have you experienced Anything relating to what Chelsea said about corrupt practices in an organization. And also, 
Have you experienced or heard anyone defending the reason why they have to cheat? Call us. Let us know what you think about the program. So, oh, we have a call already. Hello, good evening. What's your name and where are you calling from? All right, try back again. The number is 0810844718. So, madam, um, we talked about the size of the class. What would you say is the ideal number of students that are supposed to be in the class? Okay. The ideal number of students that should be in a class, it should not exceed 30. Okay, not 30. Yes, it should not be more than 30. Is this primary, secondary? Secondary. Okay. Oh, it should be more All right. Hello, good evening. What's your name and where are you calling from? Hello? 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 All right, try back again. All right. Network providers, please help us out here. So it should do XC30. Yes. Hello, good evening. Hello? Hello? All right, try back it. Hello, good evening. Hello, good evening. Yes, we can hear you loud and clear. What's your name and where are you calling from? All right, what part of Abuja? All right. You're listening to the program, so let's have your take. Okay. 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 All right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. Oh. All right. Okay. All right. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much for your contribution. But I'm sure if you listen very well, I'm not sure she was trying to validate it. A question was asked, why do they cheat? She was just stating a reason. Yeah, she was just stating an instance. Yeah, the parents' contribution. So if you, if you started from the beginning, even after the debate, we have said that whether you like it or you don't like it, you cannot justify what is wrong to be right. And we reported about some persons that are cooling off in prison right now because of examination malpractice. So it was following up with a question that she answered that way. So she was not validating it. She was just saying, these are some of the reasons why. All right. <laughs> All right. So, so these are some of the reasons, but it does not make it justifiable exactly. yes exactly we're just trying to state you know why things happen why things happen but not justifying it that was what she said all right <laughs> yeah but i've just rephrased it now we're just talking about the parents contribution yeah what they how they contribute to it so you are going to hear all that. The, the program is not finished yet. We just want to take your call. All right. Thank you so much for contribution. And please stay through to the end. Hello. Hello. Good evening. Hello, good evening. 
Good evening. Thank you for calling. What's your name and where are you calling from? Oh, so sorry. Okay. Okay. All right. Two minutes. Uh, Lovely. Okay. Okay. Now, I'll be speaking to your kids of class mm. and then they told us that none of us had to do physics practical mm. or do the theory exam. That is going to give everybody practical reading. If all the theory questions were for us, dictated to us, all we have to do is to pay him some amount of money. And everybody was excited. Hmm. Immediately I stood up and I told you, sir, I'm not going to be part to your dreams. I'm going to be part of your plan. I'm going to ask because my parents paid for my exam field that is set practical for me hmm. and allow me to personally write my exam. So while I think that paper is just a paper, I was a red book. Operation, none of them passed. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you so much, sir, for sharing this with us as far back as 25 years ago. So you can imagine how long this has been in practice. Thank you so much. I've been able to learn a lot, and I'm sure the audience out there have been able to learn as well. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. So just to ask a few questions before we round up this segment. What are the implications for students parents and the society now and even in the future okay if we don't tackle the issue of the examination malpractice now and in the future our children uh, the society will lack critical thinking and a creative ability like when a child Get involved in my practice and passes the exam. Nothing is, it doesn't have anything upstairs. Yeah. It can, like in mathematics, it cannot even do simple calculation. That means if the person graduates from the university or past secondary school, he will not even be able to defend the results 
he or she has. And that will be affecting our nation at large. Because in the, in the industries, the person will not be productive. You cannot even guide the young ones if you, are, if you happen to be the director in any company. You cannot guide the young ones. So if we don't tackle the issue of examination malpractice, it will really have an adverse effect in, in our future. Okay. How about the parents? Is there any way that it would, in turn, affect the parents? Because we've just talked about the student and the society. Okay. If a, 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 a child who has not really gone to school to learn what he or she is supposed to learn might have difficulty in getting job in the society because there is no organization, there is no employer of labor in the society now that we employ any child, any uh, graduate who cannot defend his certificate. So if a, 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 if a, a person graduates from the university and cannot defend what he or she has gone to study, how will the person get a job? So it will in turn bounce back to the parents. Okay, so the person will remain sort of a liability to his or her parents. That's what you mean by that. Exactly. All right. So, how do you think these manners can be caught? And what mechanism should the government put in place, the government, the school as well, put in place to curb these manners? Okay. Like, no, uh, like you said earlier, that some people were arrested in Akure yeah, for getting involved in a examination malpractice. Mm. I think that's a very good, that's a very good step in fighting examination malpractice to make or to serve as a deterrent to others who have the intention of going into examination malpractice when they know that if they get involved and they are caught, they will be arrested and killed. Okay, that's on the path. Of the government. Yes. So how about the school? Because I, I don't want to believe that is every school that buy into that idea of cooperation in court. So how can schools actually check if the teachers, because from, from, from that testimony we just heard, I'm not sure the school was aware about what the teacher was doing. There are some schools quite all right that we've heard, that we've heard, you know, cooperate with these people who are cooperating. But in the case where the school is not in support of this, how can they check these people who are within? Like, how can they check the teachers in the school who want to bring this refuge to the school by telling students to pay cooperation fee? Like, like you said, like the, the scenario that uh, all of our callers gave, that mm. their physics teacher yeah. wanted them to pay money for mm. them to, to for him to supply answers during exam. Yeah. I don't think I cannot say that the school authority is not aware of such issue. Because him that said he will not get involved in it, he can go to the extent of reporting that issue to to the manage to the school management. So the school management is also involved in such, in that scenario. Okay. But in cases where there are so many cases where the, man the school management are not aware of what some teachers do during yeah. the examination, as in helping students to, helping students in, a, in an examination by supplying answers to them and other things. Some school management are not aware of it. So, if any, any teacher that is caught in such an act should be sacked and should even be jailed, just like the way they did to this day. those people that were caught. Yeah, in. those ones are remanded at the end, yes. pending when the case continues. We, we've not heard about uh, uh, them being jailed. They are just remanded okay. in the place where they are pending mm. further investigations, right? Yes. So now, following up with that, you're, um, from the schools now, putting those things in checks, 
We know that usually the places that they call the the satellite center or corporation centers, miracle center, or miracle center, so to say, uh, 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 what would I call it? Are uh, approved by the government? I don't know. Yeah. Okay, fine. Is there something the government should do more to check such centers since it is more rampant? In those areas. Okay. I would also the, the government on their own part are playing a very good role. Okay. Like when you get to a examination centers, you see civil defense, you see okay. so many um so many um, um paramilitary bodies okay. to check me as in who are there to check me the, uh, the activities of the uh, the exam. Mm. So I think the government they really need to do more okay. in checkmating this malpractice in an in examination centers. They really need to do more. Okay. Honestly. All right. Dear listeners, we'll be right back after the break. Please don't go anywhere. Dear listener, I want to welcome you back. Uh, to this unimportant program. You know, when um, the word government is mentioned, the first picture people have in their mind is either the president or the governor. But they cannot be in school to invigilate or summarize the examination. Mm. So, actually, supervise the trust. And anytime you collect money and allow people to cheat in the exam, you are robbing the student, you are robbing the society. There are people who are listening to us now, who truly cheated their way to their various of the, the great position they are occupying now. There are people who are qualified to actually, you know, occupy an office, but they are out there looking for job, simply because people who bribe their way are actually in those positions. I want us as a society, as a country, to look at this exam map practice. I want to let you know that just like we call some sin, fornication, and other adultery, examination map practice is corruption. But within the school system, it's called exam map practice, but it is corruption. And that is why we have judges today who cannot defend you if you don't have the money? Some judges. Right? Some judges, actually. Not all. Not some. All, some judges. We are people now who become state governor without going to primary election. Hmm. There, there are people now who will declare winners of election they never contested. There are people who are giving their party tickets, even though they're not standing for election. It is malpractice. It is corruption. Is it deep into the very fabric of our society? And if we do not check it, like I said earlier, it will not just destroy us. It will not just destroy creativity. Many will continue to jack back out of this country. And to add to that, I want to let you know that not just in this sector or in those sectors that Uncle Ben mentioned. Even right there within your home, if you support a child to cheat in any way, aside from that child being likely to turn a liability to make you carry on the body of being responsible for him or her, when the person is supposed to actually be bringing you proceeds from education. You would also bear it more when the child decides to not turn into some ill business just because they've not been able to get employment in the society due to their non 
or due to their inability to defend their results. All right, let's take the quote for today. You may cheat to get a good grade. You may cheat to pass an examination. But that doesn't guarantee the success in true life. Yeah. Please note that fact. All right, so I want us to actually go to our vocation corner. Let's have a bit of fun. Let's um, have a bit of icebreaker. <laughs> so that will not be too serious in the <laughs> studio. You know, here, what we do, what we do here is to make us know that learning is not difficult and learning is fun as long as it's kept on that part of you gaining the right knowledge. All right, so let's go. I, I'm going to ask you, Jane, a few questions. Well, okay. Let me begin with this. And then you need to give me an answer in five seconds. <laughs> okay. Are you ready? Yeah, I am. I am. Okay. About ready. That's the word. In five seconds, name five colors that start with letter B. Okay. B, black currant, um, barberry. Hello. Okay. I said color. Okay, color. Black currant, barberry. <laughs> 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 All right. If you, if you know it very well, Uncle Ben, let us hear. All right. Okay. So, um, please don't mind Jane. Can black currant be a color? Okay. How about barberry? I have a blueberry. You're on your own. Okay. Okay, so five colors that start with letter B. We have black. All right. We have blue. Okay. These are colors you're familiar with. We have brown. But you're not mentioning them in five seconds. Black, blue, brown. We have browns. Uh-huh. I have burgundy. Okay. Black, blue, brown. Black, burgundy. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever it is, in five seconds, just know that these colors are black, blue, brown, uh, it's not five seconds. Five seconds. That is a brain teaser for you. Okay. <laughs> okay, then my next question is um, can you tell me who is a virologist? Yes, who is a virologist? Virologist. From the way it is sounding, virologist. It sounds to me like it's somebody. Who makes gist go viral? <laughs> oh, Kristen. <laughs> Kristen. Well, here you come again. Virologist. Okay, there is viral, there is gist. So that's why I had to put the two together. It's not YouTube. Okay. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's not YouTube. Sorry. Okay, it's not YouTube. All right. All right, please don't mind um, Jane. A virologist is a doctor or a scientist that studied virus that affect human, animal, plants in the community, clinical, agricultural, or natural environment. Mm. Please don't tell me nonsense. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What are the subjects one needs to concentrate on if you need to be one? All right, so um, virology is biology, chemistry, and a bit of physics. That will help you uh, to study uh, this particular course. Okay, so it must be um, science. You have to have a strong science, science background yeah. to be able to do that. Yes. All right. Oh, you, you were laughing. <laughs> and I, you, you wanted to try out the blue colors in five seconds? Let's go in five seconds. Okay. Blue, black, bronze, um, brown, and burgundy. You didn't get it in okay. five seconds. In five seconds. In five seconds. Five seconds. Black, blue, black, brown, bronze, burgundy. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. That's nice. Dear listeners, we want to thank you for listening to this program today, learn with us on Radio Maria 91.3 FM. 
And we want to remind, before that, we want to say thank you, Mrs. Choma, for coming to the studio. Thank you, Ma. Thank you so much for your contribution. So, our dear listeners out there, I refresh again that she was not trying to validate the point why students cheat, given that parents pressurize them. What she was trying to say out of there is that student cheat is the reason, one of the so many reasons, but she was not validating it and making it something that you should do or follow. Because we, we had a listener call in and there was a piece of a miss up there. So that is why if you're just listening in and you, you know, you tip to that other side also, we want to let you know that there is no way we will validate what is wrong to be right. Not here, not anywhere. Because if you hear Radio Maria 91.3 FM is the voice of truth. We tell you nothing but that which makes sense and which can help you to be useful to yourself and to the society. So on this program today, we want to say thank you also to Kristen for your active participation. Mm. And also to Chelsea, thank you so much for your active participation. So, and to the parents of Kristen and Chelsea, this is for your care. Thank you very much. Thank you. And thank, thank you for allowing them to come. I want to follow up with this to let you know that they on their own will be getting some prize for their participation. I will let you know what that is. Thank Kristen, you very much. This is for your parent. Thank you. And thank you for coming. And also want to remind you that Radio Maria does not run of profit. So we appeal to you to send us 500 Naira monthly contribution, a free week. If you can do more than that to so keep this radio upload the programs on air we have so many other programs that you can listen to we would very much appreciate that so now we are saying thank you for listening to us and god bless you and god bless you so signing out now is all right my name remain uncle ben christian or lawrence over and my name is eswana jade avodoya and we have Charles' mom in the studio and we'll say thank you, thank you, thank you for your time. And mm -hmm. here we say thank you also to the studio manager, Guada Lupe.